Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem and this is our Foundry VTT series where we are looking at creating adventures in Foundry VTT version 11 uh, and we have created Stormwreck Isle and we're now looking at some of the add-ons that can make our life a little bit nicer, a better experience, tidy up some of the admin and generally just make every, everything much nicer for us to play and for our players to play as well. In the last video, um, there were some changes from in the background. So the uh, actual game system for 5th edition was updated to version 3. And that brought in a few changes and we noticed the character sheet was one of those. So there's a couple of other additions um, from that that are going to be sort of incorporated as part of this video. Because in this video, we're going to be looking at building our actual player characters um, properly or in a nice way. So... What we want to do, instead of in Foundry creating a new actor, going through all the SRDs, dragging across our race and our racial traits and all of those, um, because that really requires to make sure we've done it properly, we need to sit there with the rule book and we need to make sure that we're doing everything correctly, everything's going to work, and there may be some things that aren't necessarily in the SRD that we want to use. There is a much better way of doing it, and that is through D&D Beyond. So at D&D Beyond, um, you can have characters on there free of charge. Um, I think it's, I can't remember if it's three. I think it's three characters you can have free of charge on D&D Beyond. We can use that to create them. It covers all the rules for us. It will only allow us to select things that are allowable within the rules that we choose. Um, and it will store it all for us, which is really, really good. Then we just need to get it from D&D Beyond into Foundry. And that's the focus of this particular uh, video is we're going to be using the DDB importer add-on which I think is really really good it's really really useful and it's got a few other functions as well that we'll look at so uh, before we go and look at our characters what we need to uh, just do to remind you is to install the add-ons we're at our front page here we need to click on this add-on add tab go to install module and we can search for it now the one we're searching for is this one ddb hyphen importer and this is a D, &D beyond inter uh, integration i think it is so this is the one we want i've already got it installed which is great but it's not activated in our world so i need to go into our stormwreck aisle it's going to uh, get me to log in as the game master here we are very familiar we're getting to it's, showing up in every video now okay so we go top right go to our game settings um, you'll notice this looks slightly different from previous videos this is because of that update to the version 3 of the game engine so the D&D 5th edition game engine um, it's not because I've done anything else no additional add-ons or anything I've used but I want to go down to my manage modules and I want to find in here this one in the middle uh, DDB importer tick the box save and it's of course with all of these it's going to reload for us so here we are we've now got that as an active module uh, it has a little message down in the left hand corner which drives me a little bit bonkers but we can just click on that to close it uh, and that's now gone so looking at our actors that we've currently got under our players because of course we've got our monsters and things we've got our test okay and we've got Randall all right, now these are not complete characters. They were sort of thrown together for testing purposes. In fact, Randall, I think, is a complete character because we used one of the pre-generated ones. But if we stick with our test character, of course, the only equipment we gave them was the torches and the hooded lantern that we wanted because we were testing out the torch add-on. But they've got no class features. They've got no, oh, they have got spells. We put light on, remember? Yep, to test that as well. So this is a totally incomplete character. They've got nothing. Um, we haven't got any skill selections. We haven't got anything at all. We've not done stats and stuff. So we've got a choice. We can either overwrite this one or we can create a completely new one. Now, before we go ahead and look at how we actually do that and use uh, DDB Importer, a couple of things about this new character sheet. The most important thing we've got here is we can't edit any of these things at this point. Uh, and the reason we can't edit any is because it's locked. We don't want to accidentally change stuff. 
but right at the top left here it's quite small in the corner if we hover over it there's a little pop-up that says edit this little spanner icon if we click that it switches us to edit mode um, and now we can go in and we can on these little cogs we can configure things like our uh, various types of site and resistances, whatever we want to do. So we absolutely can manually go through and do that. But of course, that's not the point of this video because one, that's really tedious, and two, um, really, that would really would be teaching you to suck eggs. So we're not going to do that. Uh, and we can just toggle that back to uh, to play mode, is what they call it. But when we've got this on edit mode, we've got this little button that shows up for us now that says D and D Beyond. And that is a result of the add-on that gives us this button. Now, if we click on this, it brings up this, uh, this um, a name of our character. It gives us a space for a URL and loads of options around what we want to import from D&D Beyond. So I'm not going to do this on this character. We're going to do it from a completely blank one. But before we do... Uh, I'm going to switch over quickly and just bring up my D&D uh, &D Beyond uh, screen here. So in D&D &D Beyond, we're going to go to Collections and My Characters. And you can see a whole bunch of characters here that I've got pre-created um, that are useful for all sorts of different things. What we need from here is purely the link to the character sheet. That's all we need. We don't need to come in and do any super special code. So first of all, we're going to bring in Haley Longbreeze. That's going to be our first one. So if I go to view, it's going to bring up my character. So here's my character sheet. Okay, everything there that we need. Um, but you'll notice in the address bar here, it's got this uh, dndbeyond.com slash characters slash and a big long number. That's unique to every character in D&D Beyond. That's all we need is that link. So just click in there to highlight it. I'm going to do a control C to copy that to the clipboard. Let's go back to D&D Beyond. So I'm going to create a new uh, a new actor. Um, I've already got one called PPP. I'm just uh, messing around with it a few moments ago. Uh, it doesn't matter what we call it here because it's going to get overwritten by the D and by the D&D Beyond character information. So just type some garbage in there. Yes, we want it to be a player character and we want to put it in the players folder. So we create our new actor. Here they are, completely blank, nothing in here. It's a default to say they're humanoid, um, but apart from that, nothing at all. If we go to this edit, we go to D&D Beyond, it brings us up this, and this URL here at the top is where we want to paste in that link that we got from D&D Beyond. Okay, now the good thing, as soon as we put that in, it does this little, uh, checkbox here this little green tick to say yes that's a valid character uh, reference okay so that means it's had a quick look and it says yes there is a character there this is going this should work no problem we can then look at some of the options do we want to bring in the name hit points hit dice all of that stuff to be honest why would you not want to bring in their spells and their weapons and everything else so we're going to bring in everything um, this is going to use the icons from the built inbuilt dictionary we've got here but we could pull in the, um, the ones from the SRD if we wanted to. Um, don't see any reason why we would do that. Um, I am happy to leave all of these as default. I don't need to change any of these at all. Okay, It's going to bring in everything that I want uh, as a default for it. So all I need to do is click Start Import. Okay, So that is immediately going off. It's going to D&D Beyond. It's looking up all those stats and things for this character bringing down the picture and things um, and bringing them into Foundry for us. Easy. Now what you will notice, regardless of what resources your character may have, it will always bring up this box saying, well, hang on a minute, which resources do you want to track? You can track up to three. So for Haley, we're going to track our channel divinity because that's a once per short rest uh, kind of scenario uh, and harness divine power which is once per long rest as well so you can see that's something we wanted to track and we don't have a tertiary resource because this is just the two it's already selected so we don't need a tertiary resource there so happy to do that you can see you can turn that off but I want that on every time just do default and bosh it's done 
So once it's finished the import, it's just going to close its own window and show us our character sheet. Now it's already on edit mode, so I'm going to click edit mode off and put it onto play mode so we can see our character sheet. So what this has done for us, it has brought in our portrait for our character. It has set their speed, it's brought in their hit points, how many hit dice, uh, it's brought in, it's automatically put those two as favourites, but we'll look at that in a moment because that's not working quite the way we want. It's brought in all of their skills, uh, including which ones we've got proficiency in, which is great. All of our stats are brought in, our saving throws, uh, and some of our racial things that we need. Uh, down the right hand side if we go to inventory we can see that it's bought in all of her equipment from uh, D&D Beyond some of which haven't quite worked the way that I would like and that's partly because of one of the changes that we now have to do with containers thank you to the version 3 of the D&D game um, the D&D the, the, the game um, set so um, it's bought in all of that stuff Bought in all of our features, they are all here. It's bought in all of our spells, which is fantastic. Uh, one thing I did notice, it's a shame you can't change the width of some of these columns. So when you look at Healing Word, that's really crammed in down there. It'd be nice if we could slightly restructure um, the width of these to make that a bit smaller. It's a really minor niggle, really minor. Um, but they're all in here. Um, it's All of the effects are here, so we can show when we're invisible. Uh, whether we're restrained and things, we can do all of those conditions direct, and the players can do that straight from here as well. Okay, so one thing I have noticed is there is a couple of minor problems with the import the way it is at the moment. Um, a couple of things that don't work beautifully. One of those is if we look under our portrait, we can see we have an armor class of two. Uh, how the heck has that happened? So if we hover over this, it tells us that our armor class of two is because we've got a shield. Now, a shield should add plus two, not set your armor class to two. And I did have a little play with this, just making sure I knew how to use it before <laughs> we run the video, because I thought it could end up really, really long video. And I found out what the little issue is with that. So you just need to make a small amendment. If I come over to the inventory, uh, you can see that the shield is already equipped, but she should have chainmail armor on. If I unequip the shield by clicking this little icon here, you'll notice her armor class pops to 16, which is what it should be. Okay, so it's obviously when we put the shield back on, it's taking it back to two. So there's an issue with the shield. But if I click on these dots next to it and go to edit, we can see what that problem is. So under just under the name of the item here, it says light armor. A shield isn't light armor. So what it's doing is it's seeing that this, oh, you've put this armor on and this sets your armor class to two plus your dex modifier. That's that's not what we want at all. That's, that's just not correct, is it? Okay, so we're going to change that. Um, now, if we go to details tab here, we can see equipment type, it says light armor. For whatever reason, it's saying light armor instead of shield. Now we've changed it to shield. You can see that here it's changed that word to shield. And if we close that, we can see that now when we put the shield on, it goes to plus two, not sets it to two. So it's going from 16 to 18. So that was a little niggly thing that I found that um, was, was a little bit frustrating, but you saw how easy that was to fix. You just need to be wary of that, um, that it's imported that one slightly incorrect. And if we look at chainmail armor, uh, this seems to think that this chainmail is light armor. You can see it just says it under there. So it's not going to apply any penalties that it should do. So there is a slight issue with this at the moment. Um, and if she's wearing a set of full chainmail armor, that ought to be heavy armor. So we can simply do that nice and easy. Uh, and that's fixed it. Now says heavy armor. And we can take that on and put it off if we want to. Okay, so that was the only real big issue that I found that um, was messing up the figures. But really, really easy to fix that shield. No problems at all. Okay, the other thing that's slightly um, weird because, and I suspect that that will get fixed, but it's to do with the fact that we've got, now got version 3 of the game engine for D&D, &D, um, and the, D &D, uh, the DDB importer isn't necessarily putting things in the right place. So one of the things Hayley has on her character down here is uh, she has an arms box. So 
uh, for this particular character, who's a priest, 50% uh, of all of the coins that she finds, gets rewards, or etc. She donates 50% of all of her income uh, to her church, and she carries a specific arms box uh, that enables her to do that and keep it separate so she doesn't accidentally spend it. It's just part of her character that's decided what I wanted to do. Uh, and you can see we have don't have a proper image here for for this loot. In the third edition of the game engine, we now have just at the top here different containers. So it's pulled back pulled through from D and D Beyond the fact that Haley has a backpack and a component pouch and her arms box. So these are separate containers we can click on. Say what's in a backpack? Apparently nothing. What's in her component pouch? Nothing what's in our arms box nothing because it's dropped these things here so we can move this stuff um, and we can we can put it where we want to so let's open her backpack and then what we should be able to do is take things like her two-person tent is probably for some reason it says that's light armor because it's under equipment clearly that's not correct so i think it's bringing through everything and defaulting to say it's light armor which is a little bit odd um, but there's certain things here that she's not going to be walking around with in her hands. So things like a healer's kit, we can just drag that. If I move this over slightly, you can see that a little bit better. I just drag that and drop it in the backpack. Uh, Tinderbox, that's not going to be hanging around in her hands, nor is her rope. Uh, and we can stick a bedroll on top of a backpack. And I think it's fair to say that we're probably going to have the tent strapped to the backpack somewhere as well. So that's all part of her backpack. We can close her backpack that off of this front character sheet, but any time we want to see what's in a backpack, it's here. But it does include weight for it. So if you're using the encumbrance system, which you know you probably should, but some people don't, that's absolutely fine. Your choice. Um, if we're, uh, you know, if we're going to be uh, dumping stuff in here, the weight of this stuff counts towards the overall character weight. And actually, you can see character weight just to the right of the uh, the character portrait there. So currently 115.4 pounds out of her encumbrance allowance of 255. Uh, so it doesn't matter where the item is as long as she's carrying it. Uh, now probably ought to stick equipped on there. Um, yeah, it is already equipped to make sure that she's actually carrying that. So this container down here, this is, this is junk because it's actually replicated by her arms box. So I can delete that, uh, just right click on it and delete it and get rid of it. Um, currently there's nothing in her arms box okay nothing at all uh, which is fine um, but what we can see is it's imported her money just on this line here just below the bags so we've got 13 gold and we've got five silver so we can just hover over those so for this character i want half of that money in that arms box that's where it belongs this little stacked managed currency uh, icon here if i tick this um, it brings up this little box. I move it over to the left so it's a bit easier to see. You can see that this is going to enable me to convert some money or to transfer. Defaults to transfer. So I want to transfer half of that money. So it's automatically going to work out how much that is. And where do I want to put it? In my component pouch, my backpack, or for me, in my arms box? I can click transfer. This money here, my ready money if you like, is now reduced and if I click on the arms box you can see this line here six gold two silver and of course I can click on this little coin thing and I can transfer some of it back or whatever if I wanted to do now in Haley's case she's not going to transfer it back she's just going to hand empty that thing over um, at the next church she gets to um, whenever that may be so this is this is a new thing for the the third uh, the third version of it Okay, so is this character complete and ready to go? Yeah, pretty much. Um, one of the things I want to do, though, is to set up my favourites down the left side. And you see it says drop favourites here. So I want to get this ready to play. Okay, so this is my front page. This has got most of the things I want to, but I don't really want to keep having to come to equipment to every time I'm going to use some really, really common actions. So one of the things that's really common for Hayley is to smack things with her mace. Okay, so that's going to be there, makes it much easier for uh, for weapon attacks and things. So I can drop that in there, little shortcut, easy peasy. 
Under features, um, I've got a couple of things here that I would want to have on that front page. I'm going to put her channel divinity because it reminds me I've got it and reminds me whether I've used it. So we can dump that on there. Uh, and I'm going to put her shield master shove on there because that's part of the way that she operates. She uses shield master, uh, shield master shove um, a lot, <laughs> an awful lot. That's one of her main core um, things that she does. Uh, we can also then go down to spells and kind of like, you know, have a look and go, are there common spells here that she would use a lot that I want on there? Now, for some, for things like sorcerers, where they've got a much more limited number of spells, um, that's probably really great. Uh, not so much with clerics, where they've got access to, to quite a wide range, but Shield of Faith is always going to be something that she uses. She tends to use her Shield of Faith a fair amount, and of course, when she uses that, that bumps her AC up to 20, which is pretty good for a second level character, because uh, she is only second level on this particular version. Okay, so um, you'll notice we've now got these Channel Divinity here and Harness Divine Power, um, but actually we've already got that there. Uh, do I want my Harness Divine Power on there? Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I want that on there. I can't just easily delete these off because they're already added to favourites, but I can just tick this Edit button and you can see there's little crosses. I can get rid of those out of that. Okay, so there we go. She is ready to go. Everything I need is on this front page. When she wants to attack, whack her mace button um, and immediately in the chat, it's popping up here for her to attack, uh, do damage, uh, etc. All right, so that's Haley. She's done. She's ready to go. Fantastic. Uh, no other alterations needed. So um, I'm going to, without going back to D&D &D Beyond, I'm going to grab my next character and we're going to do the same. Um, should be much quicker this one. So create a new character, doesn't matter what I call them, they're a player character, I want to put them in players, create a new actor. Here we are, D&D &D Beyond, in the link, paste that in, I'm happy with the defaults, start the import. So this is going to bring in uh, Sorry Man the Wide, um, and again he's, he's going to ask about these um, these resources. So he's only got Rage, obviously a Barbarian, so I'm happy I can tick that. Bam, there he is. Really, really quick to bring in. Um, I didn't spot any issues with this when I was looking at this one. I did do, as I said, I did a test one. Um, but I do want to, I know it's a bit weird, but his main attack is with a quarter staff. That's what he does. Uh, he has a shield as well. Now he doesn't usually use the shield because he's using a two handed quarter staff. But if things get nasty, he switches over to shield and a hand axe. Uh, so I do want to make sure I edit this uh, and fix that little problem. Change that from light armor to shield, uh, which that's all it was. Bosh, done. If I do um, come off of edit, if I go back to shield and add that on, he's jumping from his AC over here on the left. He's jumping from that to that. Now, interesting, um, the shield is working in conjunction with his um, unarmored defense, which is quite nice. Right, uh, anything else I need to add to my short thing on here? Not from the equipment. Um, I am going to put his Tavern Brawler Strike on here because he has this unarmed attack I gave him. Nobody uses Tavern Brawler. <laughs> you very rarely encounter it. So I kind of made this character to um, kind of take the mick out of that, really. Uh, and a couple of other things he's got here. He's got Magic Initiate. He's got the Catapult spell um, and and true strike i want up there i know a lot of people complain about true strike for, for for good reasons understandable reasons um but this character is built in a very particular way to take advantage of uh of a few things um it's not max minning it's just he's got quite an interesting character essentially he's a not very bright barbarian who thinks he's a mage it's, it's quite you know it's not a not a new concept by any means um but he's, he's quite fun to play Okay, uh, so any of his spells that I want to bring over the top there, I've actually, I'll see what I did there. Too busy talking. I've copied his initiate um, powers over. What I want to do is copy his actual spells over here. So catapult that he likes to use um, and his true strike. So he can do catapult at will um, pretty much whenever he likes, which is pretty good. Uh, and shocking grasp. Okay, 
So I can stick those in there, that's all he needs. Uh, unarmored defense is in passive, it's already on already, which is great. So it's copied that over. Uh, and I think that means he is ready to go. Brilliant, okay. So, uh, just a couple more. Uh, let's bring in uh, Baldrick, not Baldrick from Blackadder, but Baldrick. Create our new actor. Again, whatever we want to call it. Player character, in players, unlock, go to the D&D Beyond, paste the link into there, start the import, wait for it to ask us about resources, second wind, yep, that's the only one he's got, Bosch, he's in, nice and easy. Uh, we just want to check to make sure I'm going to take the second wind out of there. This this one, I don't, I don't want the one with the icon, just looks nicer. So his main weapon is his halberd, so I'm going to stick that there. Um, and, uh, and his heavy crossbow. Oh, I'm going to do that in a minute. There's a reason for that. If I go to his features, I want to cop down his bonus attack, uh, his opportunity attack as well. So it's always on the front there as a reminder that he has those, or otherwise I tend to forget. And then I'm going to stick his heavy crossbow there as well. Okay, so anything else I want from here? Absolutely not, which is good. It's got no spells or anything. Um, he doesn't even carry a shield, so that's fine. Again, it says chainmail, light armor, same as it says common clothes, light armor, mess kit, light armor. So there clearly is an issue, and I suspect that will get patched pretty darn quick. But the third, uh, the third uh, edition of the um, the D and D modules only very recently come out in the last few days, so give the people a chance to fix it. Okay, so turn off the edit, and here he is, standard arm class of seventeen. Obviously, he's running around with a halberd etc. It's given him his pouch and his backpack. Yes, I could dump the stuff in there. Not going to worry about that right now. Okay, that's our third one. And we want to complete our party with our fourth one. Uh, and I think I'm going to pick this one. A name some of you might recognise because he was a NPC come player for re reasons of ridiculousness as every game should have a little bit of silliness. Uh, and we're going to bring in this chap here. So here we go, Nundro Rockseeker. Uh, no, no resources to bring in, which is fine. Click default, in he comes, lovely jubbly. Here he is. Uh, we just need to check everything is working for him. Um, equipment wise, stick his Warhammer down there, his weapon of choice. Uh, that's what we're using on a, on a daily basis. <laughs> Uh, go to his features. Obviously, this is things like racial features and things like that. So is there stuff I need to pull over from here? No. If you haven't noticed, he is a warlock. So we're going to bump, dump a couple of his favorite spells in the front there. So they're nice and easy to get to. And we don't need to put anything from there in. Okay. So uh, he doesn't... Let me just check. He doesn't have a shield, does he? No, I was fairly sure he didn't. Uh, he's... We can turn that edit off. And there he is, he's ready to go. So he's got his nice, easy to access things here. I can see everything I need. I've got his health right here if I need it. Um, well, I'm sure I will at some point. So that's it. That's that's how we import characters from D&D Beyond. It's really, really quick and easy um, to bring them in. Uh, and of course, we can then just dump them straight onto our map and ready to go. Obviously, I haven't used Tokenizer on these ones yet. Um, so they are just square. Uh, Nundro's picture is not quite a square, so it looks slightly odd. Um, these other ones are fine. Uh, so I will, of course, be creating uh, tokens for those. It's good to see their visions working. Now, one thing I do, actually talking to vision, one thing I will need to do is just make sure that we've got our vision set up um, for him correctly. Um, now, that's for the character sheet. Um, when I've got him... Du, 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 du. Just bear with me a second. If I dump him out here, there we go, under his vision. There, yeah, look, it's already brought in and set up for him. I hoped it would. I was fairly sure it would. It's already said he's got dark vision at 60 foot. Okay, so that's set up for us, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we wanted to do. All right, we looked at tokenizer in another video. I'm not going to bore you by tokenizing them again because they are here. Um, but I do want to look at something else because this is about the add-on for uh, DDB Importer rather than the character sheets uh, updates. Um, so if I go um, to the SRD, the com sorry, the Compendium Packs, there's a couple of other D uh, DDB Importer functions that are 
going to be really, really useful. All comes as part of the same add-on. If you can see at the top of the compendium packs, we now have this DDB muncher uh, button that was not there before. If we click on this, this gives us some other options of other things we might want to bring in um, from it. Now, there are some of these features that are locked behind, um, effectively locked behind a paywall. So uh, the person who you can see, actually it says here, um, it's talking about the fact that if you are a patron member, uh, you can get access to all of these. If you're not a patron member, you're slightly limited to which ones you can use. Uh, what you'll also notice is under the settings, when we look at each of these, some of these are integrated with other add-ons. So to use this box, we need to have Chris's pre-made module, add-on module, also installed uh, because it wants to integrate with other ones. It doesn't You don't have to, absolutely don't. But if you want to use that particular thing, like use the effects from Chris's pre-made module, then you need to have Chris's pre-made module installed. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what we're kind of really keen on is the fact that we can click on spells. Um, now what you'll see is that if we want to use create effect um, active effects for these, we've got quite a few add-ons that it would like us to have installed in order to use that. Uh, I'm not going to install all those now just to do that. But I can just hit Spell Munch, and it is now going to pull all of the spells from D&D Beyond that I have access to, um, and update our um, update our compendium. So if I go into here and go into Spells, uh, look at this. This is different from when we looked at it before. It's now got all of our cantrips together all of our first level spells, all of our second level spells. So we've now got access to those so that we can give them to our monsters, you know, give them to our characters, etc. So that's really, really useful. No more making our own spells or anything. We just import them. Um, brilliant little function. Uh, the next one we can do that with is to update the items one. So for this lot of equipment for the SRD, so just on items, uh, it's going to use the images from uh, D&D Beyond, Item Munch, and that's going to do exactly the same thing. It's just going to go and pull in everything that we've got. Um, quite a lot of items, so it takes a it takes a few seconds, but it's not that long. There we go, done. And effectively what that's done, I've already done it once because I was checking it worked. Uh, it's updated this, so now I've got a folder called Armour, and it's got all the armour in. And of course, with all of these items, all we do is drag and drop it onto our character sheet, and it gives them that item. Now what would be interesting is to have a quick look at shield here uh, and see that this shield is actually set up as a shield, okay? Um, and it's, a, yeah, equipment type is shield. Uh, so this one, this one's correct. It's just the importing our character sheet isn't importing our shield and armor correctly. So one thing you could do with those characters where that's happening, uh, so for example, Haley was one of them, what we could do is we could just delete that and drag in a new shield. You might find that's a bit quicker than editing what's already there. Um, I might kind of go, where is... Da -da -da. I might go chainmail armor, give her chainmail armor, and I can actually delete that version of it um, and equip that. All works the same. Obviously, it's got a slightly different icon, but fine. And I can do that instead of making those uh, changes myself. Nice and easy, lovely, jubbly. Um, okay, so back to our compendiums, back to DDB Muncher. Um, we have a monsters one. This is really, really useful just to bring, it, bring in all the monsters that we might need, or at least all the basic monsters that we can get through D&D &D Beyond. But what you'll notice at the bottom is we've got no simple clicky button because this is one of the areas that's sort of locked um, for patron supporters only. Um, I'm in two minds about that. It's like, really? You've done all that work and you're not going to share it. But also, you've done all of that work. You should get something for it um, because it's it's a really great little add-on. Uh, so I don't think I object to people doing that. Um, if I want to use it, well, I ought to support the chap, hey? I assume it's a chap. I can't remember who it was. Um, but obviously you can just go straight to their patron um, and things like that anyway. Uh, but again, if they're bringing monsters, you can generate some of the effects and things by bringing in some of those extra modules if you want to. Uh, under adventures, you can... There are some rules and instructions here. If you've got an adventure that you've purchased through D&D Beyond, 
you can use this function and it will pull all of that adventure through for you uh, the idea with all the maps and things like that so I uploaded all my manually for this one but I probably could have done it this way instead um, but you learn more if you do it yourself it's just that's that's just a better way to do it until you know what the basics are uh, and there's some other tools on here that you can use um, reset compendium actor images um, and things like that um, and obviously there's some experimental things like that here so that's basically that's it that's the um, that's the uh, DDB importer module and I think it's brilliant it just makes life so much easier so I think for for me at the moment and correct me if you disagree because you're obviously welcome to let's just shove Haley out over here if I double click on Haley to bring up a character sheet uh, when I want to level Haley, it's not that straightforward, relatively speaking, uh, to do it. Yes, I can edit and I can go through and make all those changes. What I would probably do for my characters is get them to edit it in D&D Beyond and just re-import them. Okay, so if they are, oh, they've multi-classed, oh, they've got new spells, they've got... Make sure it's right on D&D Beyond because it won't, unless you deliberately try to do it, it won't let you accidentally cheat. You can't take class features you can't access. It just doesn't give you the option. You can't take more languages than you're allowed to because it won't give you the option to. Um, it's a really nice way to do your character. Uh, and generally, I mean, you saw how quick it was to import. So if your characters are, you know, sorry, your players are updating their characters in the background, you might say, hey guys, just let me know when your character's done. And as soon as they say, yep, yeah, mine's finished, pump, whiz it over, and you can just import that straight in. Now, obviously, if they're in your, um, you know, if you haven't got access to that character, you'll need them to send you the link. But what you can do is in D&D Beyond, create a campaign that those characters join, and you as the DM for that campaign in D&D Beyond can see all those characters. So you can just go in, you can check them whenever you like, you can look at them, maybe read their backstories or whatever it is between sessions, you've got access to those characters, therefore you've got access to those links to pull them over to Foundry. Um, it's just one way of doing it. Uh, you know, you've probably got your own way. For me, I think that's probably easiest. Uh, it means I don't feel that I have to check every single character's minute detail. I just look for the, the big things that just don't look right like hang on a minute how have you got every wizard spell at first level you that's you've clearly not not done something right there all right uh so one last thing that i want to have a very very quick look at before we end this particular video is parties so we can group our player characters together um into a party rather than just being a group of separate characters we can also group monsters together into, um, well, into parties effectively, but we would call them encounters. Uh, and this is one of the things that's been around for a while, but it's now much kind of much easier. And I think in the next video, we're going to look how we're going to be able to use those. So very quickly, what we can do is if I create a new actor here, let's bring this down to the middle so it's a little easier to see. Um, and I can call these whatever I want. So I'm going to call these Haley's Heroes, okay? And instead of a player character, I can select Group here. I can also choose which folder I want to put this in if I want a folder. I'm going to not put in a folder for this. So I'm going to create a group called Haley's Heroes. Okay, I create that. And this is a group that nobody's in it. But if I take my, from my, over on my right-hand side, I can take my players and I can drop them all in here to create a group uh, sorry man so I now have a group of four characters that are all part of this group called Haley's Heroes and of course just like with our characters I can select a image um, to upload if I modify um, I can choose to upload an image of whatever I want uh, oh, let's pick a sturge oh no let's pick a fire snake or whatever I want to do I can use that um, Let's uh, move that over, shrink it down, uh, and I can use this as their as their kind of icon. Uh, get rid of that one. Oops, get rid of that one. There we go. Apply that, and there we go. We've got our image that we want to use. So you might, one of the characters might want to design the party emblem or whatever it is. You can just pop that in there. 
What it means if we're on things like travel maps, let's pop over to Dragon's Rest, activate this. Uh, not Dragon's Rest, Stormwreck Isle rather. So if the party is traveling together as a group, rather than dragging out their character tokens, we can just drag out the party token. This is where the party is. So for overland travel and things, you might find that that's a nicer way to represent the party um, rather than them all having individual tokens on the board, which just isn't isn't particularly great. So that's Haley's Heroes we've created as a group. In the next video, I think what we'll look at is creating a group for encounters and putting some monsters in there and showing you why groups is really quite useful when it comes to things like loot and experience. Um, because, yeah, it's a bit nifty. Okay, um, I hope this has been useful. Uh, it's just a reminder, the add-on is called uh, DDB... What's it called? <laughs> DDB... DDB Integrator? Oh, why have I forgotten the name? It's terrible. Let's check. A DDB Importer, a D&D &D Beyond Integrator. That's the full name for it. Um, yeah, you've seen how it works. Really easy to use. Um, saves loads and loads of time. Beautiful. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, so if you like this video, please tick the likey thing, leave a comment. Uh, let me know if you've got a, a preferred way of doing your characters in VTT, or rather in Foundry. Um, if you think that's going to be a useful add-on for you, or if you'd rather do it a different way, in which case, what is that other way? Uh, it'd be nice to know, because we can have a play and work out what our best one preferred method is. Uh, thank you very much for watching, especially if you've got this far, and I will see you in, in the next one. Take care.